Welcome back, Doubts Aloud listeners. Um, today is probably the most, <laughs> I keep saying this sort of thing, but actually it is really seriously one of the most interesting subjects that's going to probably shock all of you. <laughs> because what we're talking about today is a simple question, does God have a body? And there are actually scholars that um, uh, look into this in the Old Testament, particularly deeply um, to actually discover that, yeah, God does have a form and a body that people can see. And so, Ed, what, what do you make of this? I did hear of this a while ago, and I found it, I found it just completely crazy and unbelievable. Uh, but now I've got my head around it, and I do understand why uh, early, the early authors in the Old Testament, if not later, did have that view that God had a body. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it is, it, 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 like you, for anybody listening and anybody else, say, of faith or even of no faith in Christian faith, to hear that question, it is actually a shock. But the reason it's a shocked question is because the way God has been spoken about in the church and in later Judaism, and for that matter, in Islam and everything else, is such a different form of understanding the nature of deity and god that the idea of a body just see it just seems crazy and it is like saying you know well do you know the world is flat you know actually it's like that crazy sounding but yes um, yeah, it's just that the it's the sea we swim in um or, or the if we're fish in a fishbowl where the water we swim in is that god is ethereal and um it's so obvious that how can anyone think otherwise? Exactly. And um, it's, it's a really interesting. I mean, I've got, um, I, I looked up, I've been researching this subject and it's been really interesting. This isn't a crazy crackpot idea. It's not like some kind of just wacky notion. I mean, what is might be wacky about it is that as we've seen before uh, with biblical scholarship, and uh, looking at the Old Testament in terms of, say, the cosmology, you know, d- does it reflect a flat earth? Um, does it reflect God being in time or God not knowing stuff? All of this has come up in, pre- in um, looking at the natural reading of the Old Testament. And there is a funny thing that's gone on. Uh, the scholars that look at it are, are, are discovering what the author's may or may not have believed about something. But some extreme fundamentalists actually take it and follow that. So we've seen before in various subjects, we've seen before that, 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 that certain Christians of a more fundamentalist end would read about with open theism. They'd read about the natural passages that talk about God sort of reacting and getting angry and then changing his mind and then not knowing uh, something about the future for sure. Take it all at face value and then say, well, that's the description of what God is like. And some Christians have gone that far with God has had a body. And that's where I first heard it. I first heard about open. Oh, some, okay. Yeah. Some open theists back in the nineties. Uh, um, wow. some, somebody accused Clark Pinnock, who I met actually in the nineties and taught, he was an open theist and somebody accused him of believing that God had a body. And that was the very first time that I had heard. And he may have, he may have, because there is a logical connection between <laughs> open theism yes. and God having a form or body or locale yes, of some yes. sort. Yes. And that was the first time it hit me, but I honestly, it didn't actually spark the interest to look into it. I just thought, well, that's crazy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, absolutely. You know. uh, have we talked about Francis? Uh, uh, oh, sorry. No. Yes. People missing, are saying, where is the missing voice? <laughs> yes, that's right, yeah. Sorry about this folks. We're so engrossed with our, with our subjects. Yes, yes, We're that's typical that's blokes, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Francis, I'm so sorry, but yes, you're not here, and um, <laughs> and, um, and uh, people are thinking, well, when is Francis going to come in? Well, Francis actually may come in a bit later. She just wasn't able to make it right now uh, yeah. with some technical problems, and so she may join us and give us her great, fabulous insights. Yes, um, it'd be less blokey. Yes, less yeah. nerdy, focused yeah. on the yeah. subject and forgetting about people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, I've got um, I looked up one of these people that actually believe that God does have a body. And this and I wanted to make that distinction between, um, you know, say that I would say that the Bible in terms of cosmology, I do. I do think it reflects a flat earth and a hard dome and everything else. But that's no reason for a Christian to, to, to say, well, in that case, we are on a flat earth, as some people have done. And but some people have done this with the God's body language in the Old Testament. And here's somebody who writes a bit like this. Um, so I've just taken a quote. Um, the Bible provides enough testimony to show that God and angels are not universal nothingness floating around in nowhere. God is not universal mind conscience. He is not an abstract 
power filling all of space. He is at one place at one time, and every biblical description shows him at one place at one time, participating in, working within, and observing his creation. The Bible shows him sitting, standing, walking, talking, eating, drinking, commanding, creating, and he's always doing it in a specific location. Um, so uh, what do you yes. make of that, Ed? <laughs> well, I love it. it it's, it's like this full circle. Yes. Just like Flat Earth. It's a really good um, uh, parallel. It's not an analogy. It's a parallel. Um, yeah. And that is uh, the, the Bible starts with this ancient, ancient understanding, which is, you know, why, why should they understand better? We all got to start from somewhere. Uh, and they think it's a flat earth. And then um, they write it all up in their scriptures. Then that, those scriptures happened by circumstance become the holy book of the Western, um, uh, Western world. And then people start treating it very literally, partly because of the Enlightenment, apparently. That's, that's where fundamentalism came as a sort of rebound from the enlightenment so then they try and believe it literally and so you now eventually after about what the last 20 years or so flat earthism has come right back with a vengeance because of people want to believe in a flat earth because of the bible says so yeah um, and, and they're the, being consistent. It's like, yeah, well, it's don't, don't contradict the Bible. Don't sort of yeah. do all this nonsense about using modern science to um, challenge the Bible. No, modern science goes. And we're on a flat earth, um, yeah. you know, with a heaven yeah, above yes. and God sitting on the throne. Uh, and um, this is another example of it. That, uh, you know, ancient people, uh, the extremely powerful God, um, they have obviously they have the idea that God has a body because everything has a body. Yes, yes, it's kind of like if you, apparently a lot of early Jews did have no problem with God having a form and a body. Now we can go into what that body might look like. What is it? Was it yeah. made of? What's the shape of it? And everything else. And, yeah. and then you might yeah. say, well, what on earth are these verses? Then come on, let's give me some yeah, evidence. So let's, yeah, yeah. So let, um, let's let's get our, our bearings right. Yes. What we're talking about now isn't does God have a body? It's do the uh, uh, authors of the old testament have in mind that god has a body yes that's a very good way to put it um and um did, was their worldview an assumption having no issue with the fact of god got, and what are the implications for their view of god and how it how it's obviously has changed so before start, people start yeah. calming down and saying you're crazy it's like oh this is interesting that's the way we want people to move it's like this is interesting then where where, where, where do we get this from and um I think that uh, it's, it is really interesting to go back to some of the texts of the Bible. And as Peter N says, be careful what you wish for when you want to be biblical. And because again, you know, same with the open theist arguments, it, they come from the natural reading of a God that seems to be almost like a superhuman, as opposed to this sort of, uh, I don't know, this uh, mind that's universally everywhere and out of time and, uh, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, impassable yeah. and yeah. in everything, almost like a, a block of, I don't know, something so different, whereas actually the narratives of the garden. And of course, the interesting thing is what would come to of my natural mind many years ago and yours, Ed, is that as soon as you even quote some of these verses, you've automatically put them through the filter of a modern view of God, you know? Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, or, or yes. actually God created the, um, I don't know, the heavens and the earth. You automatically think of a sphere. Um, yeah. whereas they may not have been doing that. We just put sphere into the world. Oh, so God's created. I used to think that God created the oceans and the dome. And I was thinking of a sphere in my mind. Yeah. So you've automatically yeah, done and fit it in. Same with this. You say, well, God says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And of course yeah. the tradition has been over if Jew, early, a late Jewish tradition and obviously Christian through all kinds of writers was that was to do with anything other than your actual likeness of look. Um, and um but let me show you yeah. something so here. what happens so you obviously into this so what's the yeah. actual language say does it well, have any hint of metaphor and uh, everything in in the use of the language? well it's it's really interesting i remember being at, co at bible college and the university new testament lecturer was talking about something and I, I i felt i didn't know it at the time but i kind of threw him and um he was talking about you know all the books in history and people have written books and books and books on what the actual image of god means and likeness and it, you could probably fill up a library of 
sim- saying similar things, variant things, but I'm pretty sure that anything would have been dismissed if, if it was to do with your actual form. <laughs> and, um, and, and yet yeah. I brought up the verse and I said, well, okay, what do you make of this verse then? And um, I, I brought up the verse um, uh, because it talks about what, uh, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Um, and then I brought up, well, what about in Genesis 5 when it says, and Adam lived 130 years. He had a son in his own likeness, in his own image. He named him Seth. And I said, you know, you've just spent the last hour talking about the amazingness of what image and form mean. So what does that mean about um, um, Seth in regards to Adam? And he was like, he stopped in his tracks and he said, that is an amazing insight. I've never been asked that before. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, and i thought to me it was an innocent one because it's the same language it's like yes. seth is made in the image and own likeness Does that mean he's what in, 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 um uh, it's all to do with your character or your um i don't know all kinds of traits it could be that but um actually it's like um well it just followed suit he, he, he you know you begat the same kind of creature could have been the natural reading of that yeah. um there, there's so another what, yeah uh, well i'll just say is there have you sort of done a little tour of the word throughout yeah, a little bit. And uh, there's another interesting verse in Deuteronomy 5, 7. It says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image of any likeness of what, in, what is in heaven above or earth or in water and underneath. Carved yeah. image or likeness. It's image and likeness again. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean, you know, yes, don't, don't make for yourself some sort of emotional, eternal. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, do you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, exactly. It can't, um, like, has to be very It physical. has to be bearing that sort of physical image. And it's like, OK, so here is now. This is what I mean. Be careful, fundamentalist, what you wish for when you want to be biblical. And I don't blame the sort of, well, I would say slightly crazy people that, that take it to its full thing, because I think they've just got it wrong. This is a sign that the Bible is actually sort of myth making in action rather than <laughs> actually true but that's the simple uh, way out uh, but the logical thing is is that yeah if you read these verses um it, i think a natural reader might cross their mind before they quickly dismiss it in the name of theology you know <laughs> which we yeah. would have done so i'm not blaming anyone yes. i would have done it. well it, it never occurred to me and it, it just <laughs> said right. oh don't be ridiculous when, yes, when the, the first person said oh of course the likeness means um the same shape that we have a body uh, uh, a torso and limbs coming off it and heads sticking out the top and and that that's that is what is the kind of pro forma that god used to make us because he's like that it, it does it makes it, it makes an obvious sense if someone's going to say you know not with understanding evolution or anything like that back then you would say well why do we look like we look like well because we're little image bearers of the one who looks a bit like that <laughs> you know, uh, with that sh- why why do we not have five heads and eight arms you know why do we not uh, walk around on all four well because the deities that made us were walking around with two legs and a head and a, you know so it makes a lot of sense from an ancient mindset to me at this yeah, point yeah yeah um, is francis trying to join us I've good. been listening in, so good job you didn't say anything rude about me. <laughs> no, we said some very <laughs> positive things, actually. We said, look, welcoming, hopefully you'll be returning to us, like the second coming, and giving us some great insights. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, we've been, um, okay, so in that case, Francis, pick up on something that you may have just heard us say and give, give um, some, some of your take, if, if that's all right. Um, right. Well, uh, you, you were saying that um, it, it sort of seemed ridiculous, um, but uh, that, um, that we, you tend to grow up in that, um, in, the, in the kind of world where you're being told, it's just assumed that in God's image means in God's uh, being like God and being a rational being, not uh, anything to do with a physical image. Um, yeah, so um, I, I I agree. That's that's what I'd assumed um, was just just so uncontroversial that that was what the Bible preached. That I I never I it I never really questioned it. It was extraordinary to me that somebody might come along and say that had you travelled back to the time of the writers of the Bible, even some of the later writers of the Bible they wouldn't necessarily have assumed that. Um, But I I mean, um, yeah, uh, I guess for me, uh, the verse that would always spring to mind about the question of God having a body is that one in Genesis about God walking through the cool of the garden. And my attitude to that was it's always like a bit of a... 
well, you know, you want to ask you you want to ask theists, Christians, and and um, I, I suppose all the um, mon, um, monotheistic religions. Well, okay, what what do you make of that verse? Because it sounds like a person, like sort of quite a big person, but you know, quite a. <laughs> but you know, it does sound like. A person would would do would walk, you know, and they'd wait till it was cool because they didn't want to get too hot. So, you know, how does that compute with um, if if you take Genesis literally? How could that compute? With, well, it, uh, a professor would say, if only you knew, Francis. This means the ethereal God who transcends all time and eternal now uh, is somehow engaging with the space time universe. <laughs> So yes, like... that is the sort of thing they would say. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And it's, <laughs> I, well, I always find that Jesus very did. persuasive. That, yeah. that's, that's the idea about Jesus in the incarnation. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, we'll get yeah. to that by the way, because I thought that oh, was a okay. very interesting, um, uh, well, yeah, I don't want to, I've got a point in my notes about Jesus, um, particularly where Jesus is now and what he looks like. Yeah. Uh, it's a very mm. fascinating question on this. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, you've mentioned the point uh, of Genesis. Again, I, I'd started with um, earlier on um, with Ed talking about you made in the image and then how Seth was made in the image of Adam and then how carved images and likenesses was something they, they shouldn't be doing of gods. And, and none of that seems to imply the most natural understanding of rationality of, of those carvings, you know, of, of the gods. It, mm. it's, it's the look, you're, you're trying to make an image, aren't you? You're trying to make something that looks like something that you think it looks like. Um, and so walking in the garden, in, and not only that, this ties into that sort of very open theistic thing. Where are you? You know, well, mm. of course, you know where you are. I always knew where you are, and I even determined where you were. Um, but um, um, that's theology. It's actually just natural. This God is walking through the garden as if it was something that he does, like to have a nice time, looking for the helper. Uh, couldn't find him. And so, yeah. um, obviously, people are going to say this and got nothing to do with reality. But you've got to start somewhere if you think the Bible is trying to tell you something. And so... Yeah. <laughs> Um, but there is some crazy, crazy stuff in Genesis two and three, which, which he, he, uh, are we sure that the original author didn't realise it was crazy? Like uh, the the tree of the life and tree of uh, knowledge, that they, they, they don't sound like they're supposed to be physical, real things. They sound like they're supposed to be um, it's from other 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 writings of sort of like a snake a snake was always used for this that and the other but but yeah you're right in that sense you can say right okay is the story then okay so we've got a god that walks through the garden but you you would have to have a consistent story regardless of the reality that may or may not be behind it so for example you have a talking snake and you have god walking through the garden in the narrative as if as if you filmed it say for example for to, 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 to portray it yeah. you wouldn't show I've always wondered this when they make it. Well, you know, I, I think that's a shoe bit, when they I don't like this. that. Yeah. I, oh, don't, don't... I think that's the wrong question. Oh, right. Okay. I mean, when we're talking, when you're talking to a fundamentalist, then of course that's the question. But we're talking about reality, and what the question that's important in reality is: what was in the mind of the authors who developed that text? Did they actually think this is all just a mythological? Uh, uh, that, that, that no one is supposed to believe that it actually happened, or did they think yes, this this did really happen? They imagine it happening. You mean like we talked about before with the Atlantis one, when the Plato talks about the gods doing this and coming Poseidon coming down and impregnating the women and doing this and doing that in terms of actions? Did they actually think that was reality? Or not? We had that question asked. Yes. That's the same yeah, question you're question. asking, isn't it? And it's yeah, like that's a much more yeah. rounded question. Um, and so the writer, so that if you could go and sit next to the writer and you say, so, so you think that the snake talked? And you say, you fool! Of course not. You know, <laughs> it's like um, or like the say, Book of Mormon. It was a metaphor. It's obviously a metaphor. <laughs> it's obviously a metaphor. So, um, um, but um, yeah, it's a very, very good question because that's where people get their obviously ability i've heard people say or john stott said it you know well adam and eve are real people but the snake and the trees are not real things uh in the sense of even though they interacted in yes. the story um and you have to somewhere everyone does this you know to what what what's you know but i think the snake and the trees are very much tropes of other older writing and bringing it in and uh, maybe the writers yes. just did that no, like just answer my question though just it being a trope from other writing doesn't help me at all 
because they they because they weren't sitting in the library saying, "Oh, this is an interesting trope from there. I'll use that." They that they, they are uh, writing down what they have heard. Maybe a storyteller tell tell them around the campfire sort of thing. Um, uh, and they not aware aware that it's a trope from a thousand miles away in Mesopotamia. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but that comes back to what Robin Walsh said about the um, Roman tropes about um, empty graves was actually. Um, oh well, that's could... different. That that is different. That's, Do you think that so is, though? Because it, that's like yes, saying because of Mark is a Mark. She is arguing that Mark is a literary author who's aware of uh, of other literature. I don't think she would say that the author of Genesis were. I'm not talking about the collator who's who's getting a bit of his P and a bit of his D and squashing it all together. I'm not talking about that person. I'm talking about the people who actually came up, you know, got the tradition going in the first place. Mm. Um, I think, well, that that's the whole... Uh, that's probably the hardest question about it you know um it's a bit like the scholars who look at it like even you know, that you can find that look at this subject don't say and so therefore i think god has this body that you can see they would they're not they're not actually trying to say that answer that question uh, they probably wouldn't they'd go for the sort of god of later judaism if it's a jew or or later christianity but they would they would say this is what the writers probably would say what did think and maybe that's the closest we can get I tend to think that a lot of yeah. the earliest writers did think that God, well, put it this way, didn't think that God had any, would have been shocked if you spoke about God in the later terms. That's what I do yes. think. Yes. Yeah, I, I, that's um, clear. You know, and so um, when they thought about this, I don't think it was a question. Uh, it's like Poseidon coming down to do stuff on the earth. What, 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 if you had a video camera, what would you, if they knew what that was, what would you actually capture? Well, would you capture Poseidon or wouldn't you? You know, and so <laughs> this is where this is the, the where the rubber hits the road, isn't it? But the only thing we yeah. can do is say, do, what do the what, what does the natural reading of the text convey, and what would what do we think is most likely that the writers would have actually thought yeah. um, at the time? And uh, can yeah. we can we dump Genesis for a while? Well, jump to Genesis one to ten because that's the only bit that looks like it's myth mythology rather than history. After that, the author is describing what he thinks happened. That he thinks Moses did part the Red Sea or God part of the Red Sea for Moses. He, he thinks that the Amalekites did get slaughtered. And uh, the, the by that stage in the Bible, the author is writing his, what hey, he thinks can I, is events. Can I come in with something about, about Moses? Because I'm sort of chipping in because... I don't know how long my IT is going to be reliable and so I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. But I wanted to mention um, Exodus 33, verse 23, which, yeah. And um, that is, uh, well, shall I say, um, shall I read out the, the verse, from the um, version I've got in front of me, where he says, where God says to Moses, and it shall come to pass that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and I shall take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts. And one of the things I was um, particularly remember this for is that it was the subject of a blasphemy trial against a man called Foot in the, let me just try and get the date. This is 18, 1883 Foot and another person um, published a magazine called the free thinker. And it was particularly known for being, it, say, it said, we are an anti-Christian magazine. And they printed cartoons. One of the cartoons they printed, and I'll, I'll send you a link to this so we can put it in the show notes, is called Moses Getting a Back View. And it, <laughs> it's a cartoon of Moses um, who sort of looks like he's, well, he would have been pretty old. You know, he looks like he's absolutely on his last yeah. legs. It actually looks a bit, if you remember Robert Crumb from the 70s, who did cartoons in Oz and similar um, non, uh, non-establishment non uh, things. It looks a little bit like a Crumb cartoon. But there's there's Moses sort of perched in a in a cutout in, in, a, in the rock. And then it's got um, a, a sort of like, a pair, you can just see the the back part of a pair of um, Victorian trousers being held up by braces. So there's sort of like a picture of God's trousered backside with what looks like a hole in it um, with 
I don't know, something coming out of the hole. I mean, I don't know whether that's supposed to be um, uh, flatulence. I don't know whether it's supposed to indicate the God has flatulence. You walk past and farted, <laughs> okay. you mean? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. You know, that uh, you can almost pick that up. And, you yeah. know, it's sort of a bit, it's, it's just, you know, this ridiculous thing of these checked trousers and God's trousers being held up with braces and, <laughs> and Moses is allowed to look out and see, you know, see the, butt end of god's trousers without yeah. actually and, seeing the face so he could yeah live, sort of and yeah, um yeah. he was uh anyway foot was foot yeah. with some of the other publishers was tried and foot they were convicted and foot was sentenced to 12 months imprisonment for this cartoon wow could you put the image on the shared drive and i could put a link to it in the show notes um Okay, I'll I'll try and do that. I'll try and do that. I'm yeah, you know we'll, what we'll my sort IT it skills are like, but you I'll, seemed yeah. quite surprised about that text, Ed. You know, it's like I think before the Bible has actually surprised you quite a lot <laughs> when when these verses <laughs> yes. come out. Well, it's a very it's, famous passage. Yeah, um, but but do you know this one though? Uh, the, the, which is just before it, which is um so the um when the people saw the pillar of the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would stand and worship each at, each at the entrance of his tent. So the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend, you know, um, oh, that's you know, interesting. isn't that yeah. interesting? And oh, so where yes. that's like something it's like, it's not like, well, did you speak to God? Well, I believe so. I mean, um, I thought I heard the voice in my head or I, um, I've got this into, you know, a Christian speak, isn't it? I spoke, the Lord spoke to me this morning and thought you should go on this mission trip, but that's not the same as what this verse is kind of convey. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, that's right. Speaks to him. First of all, it's a pillar of fire. God seems to have different forms of being seen, which is often more distant from a physical form, it's fire and smoke, but here, it means that maybe just for Moses at this point in the writer's minds there was this sort of face to face just as man speaks to a friend it's like you know yeah, you could actually yeah. physically I mean if you physically hear a voice doesn't all we know about a physical voice is it comes out of a form not out yeah. of nowhere you know generally speaking yeah but, um, I, I, th I think it's just really significant because the uh, Genesis early Genesis stuff it, we are a bit lost in um mythology and everything and it's not so clear cut but here is a it's a purportedly historical narrative and god is a character in the narrative behaving as if he had a body yeah and then you can go back though to genesis and go god, it's actually in the same flow of language you know walking through the garden yes. and walking past moses to see his backside you know uh yes you is, can project backwards project now, back. now we've yeah. established it yeah so it's not it's not like it disappeared after Genesis and suddenly God is this ethereal, everywhere, universal, omniscient, da 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 kind of. Da. It's it, it's not it's not actually it's not flowing quite like that yet, you know, in Exodus. Mm. Um, and some people argue in much later parts of the Bible you've still got something that's looking yeah. at God's form. Um, so is there anything later on in the Bible? Well, let, we'll stick to the Hebrew scriptures first uh, that suggests that God is ethereal and non-bodied um i think that um from what i've read of the scholars that look at this they're saying that w regardless of how god seems to evolve in the latter parts of the, the or the later writers there's never a denial that god it's, it's not like god is this and he does not have a body you know um it's not mm. it's not like a direct contradiction you you can't even say that in the new testament actually um but there are some verses that you would think it's obviously moving now and changing um um, but, but, you know, um, these narratives of the old Testament where you've got a character, God, it, like our original guy that was writing this thing, God seems to walk and talk and move and go with them and is in time and he reacts. Uh, it very much ties into the verse you, you loved hearing Ed, when we were talking about, um, Moses, him, God, not wanting to go with the Israelites in case he suddenly you know he was yes anger management stuff yeah his anger management uh, techniques yeah th this these ideas fit with a local a localized god they fit with someone who what, what so hang around if like, i'm not going to go with you you could have had a bright young israelite say don't be silly god you know you're everywhere at once you know <laughs> and yeah. um you know that you know all things you know and and so what, what are you talking about they weren't the writers surely could not have been in that mindset when they were conveying the god that seems to be a superhuman form uh, uh, or type. Um, but we could go into what people think about what that body might actually be made of or look like, because that's what's sometimes talking about in this, this thing. Um, 
Um, yep. Um, okay. Uh, well, so what have we well, got? One of the passages. Pillar well, of fire. You've got the pillar of fire, pillar of smoke, but one of the but, passages is in Genesis. It's where the three people come up and talk to Abraham, and it clearly oh, speaks right. that it's God, yeah. and he didn't know it. And yes. some people have thought, well, does that mean God can? There is this debate, even in the scholarship on this, is whether God can actually pop up in different but different places at the same time in different bodies, or whether it's one is always a localized one God. And this this thing could be interpreted that all three were God. And of course, Trinitarians are going to love that. <laughs> you know because they yes, do of course. They, yeah they pick up on that and they go aha you see um in, in little early incarnations you know of, of a yes, human that's, form yeah you know? that's right yeah, yeah. it makes um, the incarnation need more more yeah and so uh, um, step and it shouldn't be a shock though because obviously people do christian orthodox christian as it developed do believe that god and jesus are the same thing and jesus walking around palestine was god in a body um so it shouldn't be ridiculous, um, even if you think that God in a body is running the universe at the same time in some way. Um, so what do you both think of that? Yeah. Well, mm. is running the universe the kind of thing that the Old Testament God did? Wasn't he more interested in his, his own people only? Yeah, yes. And, and running. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, helping kill other nations and stuff as opposed to. Well, that would have yes. been what running the universe was about, sort of getting rid of the Midianites and trying to get people into the land <laughs> um, um, uh, rather than um, a cosmic view at that point. Yeah, good point. Yes, yeah. Mm. I, d I don't know. I mean, I find the whole concept of the Trinity so so <laughs> um, utterly incomprehensible that um, it, it sort of doesn't doesn't either add to it or take away from it. I mean, it's just like another, um, it's it's the least of the problems. I think, you know, them being in three, God being in <laughs> three bodies is is the least, yeah, is it, it, it neither adds to nor subtracts from, to my mind, the Trinity argument, because I just find the Trinity is just, yeah. it's people saying something that contradicts itself and then at the end, triumphantly saying, ta-da, and there we are, you know, so it all makes sense. Well, no, it doesn't. It's still, it's still a self-contradiction. I don't get what you say about it. Contradic self-contradictory. Yeah, it does. Yes. I mean, let us make God in our image has also been used for that. And it's just like, you know, yeah, you're right. It's adding to and confusing to the whole thing. But have you not thought, um, as we talked right at the beginning, Ed, about, say, the flat earth and god the open theism thing and this natural language it all does fit because the idea of god being up there on a throne surrounded by other gods maybe or other angels um, it's really i always did think as a kid it was really odd to think of an angel as a local being all surrounding the throne of god and god sitting on the throne but god actually is everywhere and this omniscient and out of time i'm just wondering how do you sit on a throne in it even if it's just like even a metaphor how what um how does it actually work you know you've got all these little beings you know surrounding the throne of god how far yes. do you want to take it in either direction before it starts not to make sense <laughs> you know yes, um, yes. you know um when he we, says i'll we, send an angel down you know it's uh, i imagine myself in heaven because of, that's what you do is when you're trying when you're a christian and i guess you know nowhere to look <laughs> i wanted to worship the, the almighty i wouldn't sort of think well he's it, sort of around everywhere and I've got nowhere to to direct my my gaze, as it were. We in in yeah. church we kind of looked forwards and up a bit, didn't we? So that's where God was. Uh, but we knew we were imagining it. But somehow, when you're in heaven, you shouldn't be needing to project and imagine. It should be all instantly real. Yeah, it's funny, Ed. You know, because I had the exact opposite feeling about that. Um, in terms of thinking about Jesus himself. And this was the point about Jesus and the ascension, because I was taught that, you know, Jesus, obviously, you know, we had a body in on the earth and he ascended and disappeared behind a cloud and sat somewhere or was somewhere. It wasn't like he suddenly evaporated into this God of the universe. It's like you could go somewhere in another dimension and see a physical Jesus with arms and legs and eyes and maybe even hand marks. I don't know. And mm -hmm. I thought I, th I had the exact opposite problem. I thought, well, hang on, if we get to a new earth and a new heaven, 
I'm going to say, you know, someone says, have you seen Jesus? I said, I can't. There's about a million people want to see him before me and I can't get there. (laughs) So it's like (laughs) I had the exact problem. It's like, where is he? Well, he's right there. It'll take about another thousand years before he can see you personally. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the way. Isn't it funny? Your corp is important to him. Yes, that's right. Now number one million, (laughs) 238,399 in the film. But then you could say, well, on earth, I was speaking to him every day and he was talking to me. And now you say, I've got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. See, it, it does get a bit crazy in the end when you try yeah. to make it work, you know. Well, yeah. I, I guess they, they'd sort of say, well, in his resurrected body, he can polylocate. Although, oh, um, interesting. I guess that's what they'd say. But um, then again, you know. He had so it's poly- like a mega church was- with the overflow rooms. Well, yeah, you know, if, if you could polylocate. In this overflow room. Or vir- yes. virtual reality beaming avatars. Maybe. Yes, yes, your Jesus avatar will be with you shortly. But then, you know, <laughs> why, why did he need to look, you know, I, perhaps it's getting a bit off topic, but why did he need to leave the tomb? He could have been in the tomb and he could have been in Jerusalem and he could have been in Nazareth. I mean, you know, what what was the big deal about about leaving the tomb if... if um, he can be all sorts of other places or, you know, his resurrected body could have stayed in the tomb. One mm. in the tomb, you know. One, and why you know. did he go up and disappear behind a cloud? Uh, well, it, yeah. Gone sideways know. or down through the earth for that matter. But I suppose it had ideas then. Down was bad, up was good. That would have um, been yeah. it, yeah. yes. Yeah. But the idea is probably rooted in what I was mentioning earlier. It's rooted in the idea that they probably really did think God was up and outside yes. the dome and God had a throne. And so if you're talking like that, you just need to logically think, well, what did they think? You know, was it an empty throne with this sort of omniscient God who's everywhere in the universe suddenly somehow being talked about as on a throne? What does it mean? It's just a metaphor for power. That's what yeah. I used to think. I thought it was all a metaphor mm. for power. You know, the scepter of God. Uh, it's not Thor, but actually this is more like Thor. <laughs> I mean, I've, yeah. I've, I've tried to have this conversation so many times with, with um, Christians and I, it's always just ended that I just don't understand what, what, they're saying to me yeah and i've said well you know where is he now he's got a physical body so where is that physical body and very often the answer will be sitting at the right hand of god well you know i don't but what <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> <laughs> um so presumably someone could sit at the left hand and they thought even the disciples didn't they say can we sit at your left and right but that's jesus of course yes it's um, yeah, so but, I... but then you've got jesus sitting at the right hand of the father and the father is nowhere to be seen <laughs> so, I mean, and, and must must that not just be so so dull? Just to sit, yeah, just to sit. Just there. To, you know, I mean, surely it wants to go go off and get a bit of broiled fish. You know, like, it's, <laughs> it seems to have been all taken something from a bit earthly, different. It's earthly kingdoms have been projected back onto. Um, you know, yes. even if you said we're made in God's image, it's actually God's made in your image. And that's why God can yes, act yeah. a bit like most humans. Yes, and yes, the yeah. kingly ideas at the time with the scepter and power and rule. Uh, you've just projected that into a heavenly version and then said that's yeah. where we came from. That's what I think. Um, yes. You know, and okay, so... Uh, some, sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Surely we have to talk about Greek philosophers at some stage because it, it's them that have put it, uh, the idea in our heads that God is ethereal and it doesn't have a body. Um, and we, we completely agree with them that, that the idea that God should have a body is ridiculous to us now. So, I mean, have I got it right, or did the Hebrews come up with the uh, with the transfer? Surely it's the Greeks. Um, no, no, it's later Hebrews apparently that started the flow show. Um, I think it was. Um, no, uh, what I'm talking about is the transition the, from the, yeah. God having a body in the he- Hebrew culture to the Christian culture by I don't know when, tenth um, century, if not hundreds of years before. Uh, the idea, of, you know, with Anselm and people, he who greater cannot be imagined or something like that has got that's the, his one of his definitions of god mm. that they completely swung it round um by then that uh, god didn't have a body I, and so at some stage there's this transition um and apparently the hebrews caught up a bit later or, or transferred later put it that way uh, um. that to, to God not having a body, what, like, like the Greeks, I believe that the Philo and there's another guy called Memonides. I'm not yeah, sure. Well, they're, they're centuries, centuries apart. Philo was uh, uh, writing was at the same century. time as the New Testament. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And he he didn't agree, and he had much more influence on later Christian thought. Um, he didn't 
that he thought well, this would be ridiculous that God has a body kind of talk apparently. So um, that was yeah, uh, but he was he was uh, he was Jewish. obviously Hebrew, but he yeah, didn't write Greek. in Greek and, um, and yeah, saturated with Greek. Greek philosophy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah. the Greeks, and this is why we had that question before about Plato thinking, hang around, the Platonic and Aristotelian thought is is in fact this timeless, eternal now God who is a not body and everywhere, and yet they talked about the old gods a bit like the Old Testament talks about Yahweh. So it's a fascinating link there. Um, and mm. But that those thoughts about God as we now, na- that's why we, when you first say, does God have a body, you laugh, unless you talked about yeah. the incarnation, which brings it, s- suddenly throws some interesting quirks into there. Um, it, it's, it's the Greek views of God that won out through influence into a, a Jewish thinking and then obviously Christian thinking as we moved on. Um, yeah, immortal souls. This is verse um, in whom we live and move and have our being. That mm. that can't be an embodied God that, that's being talked about, can it? That's right. No. So, uh, so that's a New Testament verse somewhere. Yeah, and John twenty four is it? John four twenty four says God is spirit, um, or God is a spirit. I'm just going to look it up actually. Um, yes. Um, I think I've got it here as. Uh, so contrary verses I've got. Yeah, God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and truth. Um, and so uh, just, but doesn't actually say, I mean, because people would say humans are a spirit uh, as well uh, as flesh and blood. And so um, uh, God is spirit probably doesn't necessarily mean you couldn't have a form um, in that sense, because we speak of humans like that. And so um, I don't think that the God's body view would have been that God had a flesh and blood body uh in reality um that it might have been and this raises all sorts of interesting questions that can can you have a form that you could touch and see that isn't actually flesh well, that's a new an interesting question um mm. what about the resurrection mm. body of christians in paul's view was that a body of flesh but it, it, if not it was a body that you could see and touch presumably so um um, yes, this is this is what really interests me. That aspect of, of what kind of bodies. Do I don't think you could make? touch it. Uh, uh, the one Corinthians fifteen body. I don't think you could touch. You don't think so? Yeah, um, it's incorruptible, we... and it's. Um, well, that's, uh, that would even make you it's... touch it for a long time. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Does that, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Know. Well, can you give us the whole verse? Because I mean, to me, that would mean that it doesn't. It doesn't um, not. It, you know, it, it's, but it's, not, it's still it's there, has a form. And there, this a, it's a paragraph, um, and it starts comparing um, the natural body and the spiritual body. Uh, and um, we've got to be careful not to assume natural means physical and spiritual means um, ethereal. Hmm. Uh, uh, so we can't assume that, but I think it does go a long way towards that. And it says, eventually, when it, it comes clean, it, it says that... Uh, Jesus in his uh, nat- in his spiritual body is a life giving spirit. So yeah, to me, but... that that seals it in the end. Right. Okay. So you think? Oh, so you think that that would lead because the historic Christianity never went that way in terms of Jesus sitting up there on the throne. It was a bodily body um, of of some sort that you could actually see three dimensionally. Um, so are you saying that you never did think Jesus was a th- like a, a form of a head and an arms and feet in heaven? um see this is very interesting to the whole subject we're talking about because that's exactly what god in a body would have been a form um uh, yeah. so i've always seen the spiritual body as not flesh it's a different kind of substance but it's still the same form and shape and you can see it touch it you could probably even eat like like the way that luke yeah. talks about you know um but maybe you didn't have digestion i don't know but they didn't really go into these questions these are ridiculous questions. yes so yeah. i'm saying that um paul had a much more ethereal view and then by the time luke wrote it had uh they realized they had to make it much more solid so it became a a, a more physical body and more a more okay so more uh, so almost f- actually yeah i tend to think that as well in the sense that it resorted back to flesh and paul said flesh yes. and blood can't enter the kingdom of god but i still think you could say as opposed and to I, a yeah. human flesh you could say yeah. look over there he's just walked through the door i could st- i still think that's what uh, yes. what paul would have thought. so i don't think paul is aware at all of all the traditions of jesus wandering yeah. about on earth and, and almost like hiding in the woods and then reappearing and coming back and sneaking back in and then sneaking off again. 
I don't think that's Paul's understanding. I think Paul thinks that Jesus uh, rose and was exalted all in one movement. That, and and so what one, Paul saw... That, that's in uh, Philippians 2. Yeah, and what Paul saw in Acts then, when he saw it, did you think he was seeing no form? He heard a voice, but he didn't see a form. Um, or isn't there another one that says he saw, but they didn't hear a voice? I mean, there's a contradiction in, in Acts itself, I believe. Um, there's three yes. versions of it, isn't there? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh, or did and, you just and see and a Acts light? Written yeah. after, but Acts was written after Luke, presumably. because Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And Luke had, himself had the view that Jesus was wondering about uh, eating flesh and um oh that oh, uh, of course yes so not eating, sorry not eating flesh eating fish eating and, fish uh, yeah a bit yeah. broiled fish so luke yeah. would be pushing more towards the body of flesh yeah interestingly enough even though paul but when was, when yeah. paul writes about his damascus road experience in uh, galatians one uh he doesn't talk about any of his physical side he he just says um god revealed himself in me and the, that word in is very difficult to translate, so I, I don't want to read too much into it to say it was just an internal experience. So you, you can't read that from the, from the Greek words, but um, it can be translated that way. Uh, and uh, so it's all very vague. And, it, it, uh, and Paul doesn't add anything else. So, um, But if everybody it, in the Christian view, even in Paul's mind, when he thought they were going to be resurrected, did you, does that mean that they're all going to disappear into a nothingness of not no form well no they have a body it would be this natural natural uh sorry spiritual body and he can make and you can make that what you like but if the, if a natural if the spiritual body is also a life-giving spirit they're both the same thing yeah that's true uh, you're that's, you're just sort of yeah, yeah. um putting body language and, on, onto spirit because you have to because that's what the greek the hebrew culture was steeped in well, I tend to think back into the subject we're talking about, that the God's form when, when he passed by Moses in that writer's mind would have been a bodily form, but not necessarily flesh, but still something you could see the back of and the hand of and the head of. So it's a bit like a, a so I say, a solid ghost. <laughs> um, so um, 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 rather than, in other words, you're, you can think, you don't think that you're in mystery land of sort of, um, you could just walk, you know how they portray it in films, you can just walk through you. Um, mm. uh, I don't think resurrection bodies or the idea of God's body is like that. It's like you could talk face to face. You could see God. Uh, 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 he could let you see him at very, very small occasions, a form. And that form is of something like the, I think it is Benjamin Summers says that he thought that some people think that God's body was made of fire or something like it was a fiery substance that you could see yes. as a human, human shape. So like a body, a body of light. Yeah, a bit like, um, who's that creature in one of the superheroes um, who's all fire, <laughs> but still a human shape. It's a head, arms. And um, uh, yeah. so this is the mystery. Can you have a body that is of a different order, but still this human, what we now call a human shape? That's the point I'm making. Um, but obviously, God can be fire and smoke and a pillar of fire. Sorry, a pillar of smoke seems to be a still voice here and there. Um, uh, uh, he seems to he does uh, maybe even in the burning bush he's doing something so he doesn't always have this form of a, of a human looking person but sometimes he turns up like a human it seems so um, something's going on um, yeah <laughs> so um, should be enough to make people run away and look at this yeah and uh, obviously even the first five books of the bible aren't written by one person so exactly. Mm. Different people have different ideas as, as they write it up. Yeah. And that's what would explain the differences of evolving even in the Bible between they seem to speak less and less of God by a long shot, talking like he was to Moses or walking through a garden or um, not seeing a face or even the pillar of fire and smoke and everything all seem to, to drop off in later books. Yes. And it was more yeah. he would speak through the prophet now. So the prophet would say, thus says the Lord, whereas in the older days, it would be the Lord would come himself. Or, or at least send an angel, um, yeah. you know, um, or theophany, as they call it. I think Francis um, is into this with uh, the idea of polytheism having the same trajectory. Oh, Being you... Gradually falling, falling away. From yes, there's poly uh, you see polytheism or you've read about it um, mm. being in the early... Old Testament, and by the time the Old Testament's um, 
later off, there's, that's completely, they've moved on completely. Mm. Is, is that right? I don't know. I don't know if, actually, I think that um, having um, listened to the uh, Peter Enns podcast on this, it sounds as if uh, it actually took quite a long time for Judaism to be, uh, to sort of solidify around the idea that God did not have a body of any sort because apparently it was Maimonides who spent ages arguing and I think as they say spent about 100 pages arguing why all the things in the in the Old Testament that seemed to say I think it was God, 500 pages actually is it I think oh so. well yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. you know yeah. but it's <laughs> uh, you know it's sort of a bit like the lady just protests too much if it takes you that long to explain why it doesn't actually say that it probably does actually say that. You know, I mean, um, yes, yeah, yeah, that's that should be a, a little like red light to go right five hundred yeah. pages, yeah, to try and explain why it doesn't mean what it seems to mean. Absolutely, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's certainly a good point to start of of um, looking into it. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he really... was um, he he was one of the early people. Uh, so he was about twelfth century, I believe. He was uh, down yeah. In, yeah. down in the south of um, Spain when it was uh, an Islamic um, culture. Um, but quite a tolerant version, of, well, quite very tolerant version of Islam. Mm. Um, so he was uh, dipping into Islamic um, philosophers who themselves were dipping into ancient Greek philosophy, and that's where it was all coming from. Mm. Interesting. It reminds me of when I was at college doing stuff and I'd have a puzzle about something or just natural reading of the Bible and saying, well, it seems to be saying this. And someone said, well, here's a book, big giant one to say why it doesn't, you know, so it's yeah. like, you know, yeah. and sometimes that's good because you could be full of ignorance about Hebrew and background and context. So it's not necessarily a negative thing, but it is interesting that, gosh, so I need the Bible and a library to get somewhere you know? mm, yeah and so whether it's right or wrong you know i just can't have the bible on its own because i'll never know what's happening so uh, can we try to imagine that god exists <laughs> okay and i think because of philosophy and everything it has, it, it has got something genuine to contribute um and from philosophy and everything, surely God can't have a body. It's, it's ridiculous to think that the creator of everything had a body because it's, it's uh, so much part of creation on this understanding that God exists, um, the embodiment and everything. And science tells us that if the universe was created, then it was uh, some non-physical agent that did it if it was, if it was a, an agent. So... If we say, look, God exists, then we pretty well have to say that God doesn't have a body. And yet he has presided over this idea of people getting completely the wrong end of the stick <laughs> over that and over everything else, like the earth being the centre of the universe and flat earth and all the rest of it. So does that all, does it make sense that God should choose to have us kind of discover him uh, after centuries and centuries of getting it completely wrong right and uh, yeah it's it, it, well, another crazy thing about the idea of revelation i suppose it doesn't kind of work in some sense so do you yes. know that um that there were centuries during which people thought he did have a body and he he's been sort of revealing gradually that he didn't have a body is, is that what you're saying yes, yes oh, okay. that's right and he, okay. he also revealed it to us by philosophers thinking it through not by holy writ because the theory of revelation is that you can only understand a certain amount about god um using your own natural facilities and looking at the world you need a lot of revelation to fill in all the rest of it uh, and you could include jesus being coming to earth as part of god's revealing himself but what is purported to be the source of that we now have of where this revelation is, is the Bible. But the Bible is also completely wrong. And mm. so God revealed it incorrectly. And the people who got it right were the Greek philosophers who thought it through and corrected yeah, it. Yeah, oh, I see what you mean. So if the objective God is the reality, other people got it right before the Bible did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, you just got no moorings at all. No, you're yeah. right which is why people who take the open theist and all these more literalistic ways of looking at the text have a point 
because they want to get rid of Greek philosophy and go the way of the earlier understanding um, and then called heretics by the later understanding, <laughs> which is yeah. true. It's, it's what happens. You, you're a complete heretic. Greg Boyd, you know, uh, you know, um, I don't know any personal people yeah. who think God has a body, but if they did, I'd have a little bit of respect, not in actual reality of what they believe, but actually in the consistency of a certain logical path. If you sort of mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, quite often. Yeah. Although you may uh, find certain views weird, you can at least respect the consistency, and and sometimes you know unpleasant um, in that uh, people who believe, oh well, I don't know that, um, like in the the slaughter of the Amalekites. I mean, but yeah. you know, at least they are being sort of consistent by saying yeah okay well you know i believe in the literal truth of the bible so i believe that happened you know that, that happened that that was that was the way it was it's, there's consistency there's a, there there's a consistency yeah. b- b- uh, with the bizarreness as well but also a consistency. Yeah. compared with something like the crucified boyd um view of of the the um all the killings and uh, genocides which is like uh, it just seems to be i don't know it's it's all not what you think basically <laughs> it's is um, yeah. boy's view which is very strange because he's an open theist and so it's all what you do think in these other verses um so um yeah, yeah very interesting uh, contradiction i felt with him uh, there um, yes and so, so you, you could say that the old testament stories well obviously that's men making it up but when you the whole point of the bible is it reveals about jesus and not not just jesus but the kind of nature of god in a way that uh, we don't, we can't get any other way. Uh, and yet the very heart of the nature of God is, does he have a body? It gets it completely wrong. Yeah, except, of course, what, what it, we've just touched into this. And I'm not sure what you quite thought yourself, Ed, but you do in the Orthodox Christianity that I knew is that Jesus is somewhere, as Francis was talking about, sitting somewhere with an all standing or walking or something with an actual body um uh, you know that you could see and people will see one day that's that's the view i always had um i never saw it as some kind of ethereal um non jesus anywhere kind of view even jesus is is can't be seen um i always thought that the resurrected body that went behind a cloud was somewhere you know yeah um, no i didn't i didn't know like the uh, uh, revelation 1 the, the vision of jesus looks to me very visionary and not not a, not a physical person with a sword sticking out of his mouth or something. And oh no, yeah. But what did you make of disappearing behind a cloud? Then did you do you, that scholarship that would say that's later writing coming in to deal with the fact that it, they were getting more physical at the time in the church? Surely you would have read that and gone, what? What would you have thought? Uh, I suppose I would have. Th- I, I thought that uh, that was the exaltation um, uh, of Philippians two, um, and Jesus started. Uh, well, I think I always think that all of the revelations of Jesus or, or the appearances of Jesus and eating fish and uh, lighting a fire by the lake shore and everything uh, it is almost slightly disingenuous that that I actually did think that Jesus was a spirit in heaven and he was sort of deigning to come down and appear physical uh, just as part of the lessons that the disciples needed in their transition. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's all. Yeah, so so I think I imagine Jesus Jesus was, once he was resurrected, it, it was a completely new game. Um, when Lazarus was resurrected, he was another boy, he was back in his body wandering about. Jesus, not at all. Right. Except oh, interesting. it's very interesting because I never would have thought that. I, w- I would have seen Lazarus walking around as in the same frame as the body that went up of some sort the body that went up and disappeared behind a cloud yeah, um yeah. because yeah whereas you would you would have sort of made a metaphor um you sound a bit like john um who john um who we've had on the podcast um nelson nelson I and mean, i've asked him point but he's talking about the resurrection happening and all the rest of it when i talked about the ascension he was very very cagey about actually what that meant and it's only mentioned by one writer and you know and it's like um he was he, and i said so did 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 people anybody on the planet look up and see somebody go through the sky and disappear behind a cloud and he, he couldn't answer it um because that's yeah. that, that's how i read it i do read that and um, it's not just like reading genesis that i do read that 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 people were on a hill in the right as far as the writer was concerned that he was and, and you could see angels obviously two men in white were there uh and i i think of all of it, it's a bit crazy to be honest but 
Um, I never made a metaphor out of that by saying oh, it's, that's, yeah. it didn't really happen, you know. Uh, well, any... it, it sort of really happened, but what really happened was that Jesus rose, went straight to heaven, and then appeared on earth. So when he walked through the walls and things, he wasn't hiding in the woods, snuck into Jerusalem with his invisibility cloak so no one saw him, and then used his, his magical powers to slide through the wall. No, he... It, from the point of view of the disciples, he came in through the wall, but he, he zapped in straight from heaven where he didn't have a body and he appeared to have a body for the, as a sort of lesson for the disciples. Right, 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 right. That's, maybe I, I had a yeah. weird view. That's very interesting. No, actually, that's how some people see these Old Testament. Else. Some people see the Old Testament passages like that, um, that, that God is in, 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 having a theophany, that, that the transcendent God steps down and appears in bodies. Um, yeah. And it isn't like God has a body. It's like he has an avatar um, <laughs> mm. and appears to people. So that's another way that people have looked at those texts. Um, and therefore, that would match what you've just been talking about. But it's very funny because I never had that view, Ed, at all. Yeah. Um, uh, I had like more David Pawson teaching. who used to say, Jesus is a circumcised Jew sitting on the throne right now, you know, in heaven. And it's like, wow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. wow. And it's like <laughs> circumcised. I was thinking Jesus with a circumcised yeah. penis in heaven. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, had, I mean, Paulson, Paulson was supposed to be someone we revere and everything. Definitely. Um, I had no, no idea that I would have had a completely different view to him. It, it just, there wasn't my circles to try to think these things through no no it's fascinating to hear your experience and thoughts in your church that way and probably fascinating francis for you to hear mine as opposed yes to yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> yes. you know yeah. um I, just another example of the complete lack of unanimity <laughs> exactly uh, yes and the person sitting in the pew next to me would probably have had of your your yeah, view. yeah. my view yeah and so some yeah, you yeah. could have come up to us francis and say so where is jesus now i'd say sitting on the throne probably circumcised <laughs> and well, look, i would have used no. the same language so it would have been Difficult yes. to unpick it to realize that we uh, were talking about different things. Yes. I wouldn't it, yeah, I wouldn't even realize that you both didn't agree. You know? really yeah, hard. and yes, because we would <laughs> say, say he, that. That's what they all say. He's <laughs> sitting on the throne. Ed, I agree with you, Andrew. You're sitting on the throne. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of right. course he's sitting on the throne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Next to the father. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the Holy Spirit was sitting there, but um, I never had that <laughs> that view. But um, I always just think the other two just couldn't be seen and were sort of universally everywhere. And Jesus was this body. That's the way I saw it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yes. So to me, that was a, even in, in, it was like a vision. A vision. E so it's a heaven. visionary throne. Yes, um, that's right. So when you did go to heaven in your mind, you did say you'd just be looking everywhere at nothing, almost wondering what, where, where, where something was. Is that right? Is that what you said earlier? I, I never really tried to think it through because of, the idea was that heaven is so different, it's just not understandable. So there's not, don't even try. Right. Oh, so that you might even just be a mind that just seems to be present in heaven as opposed to you wouldn't think yourself as walking or. or That's right. It, it, right. You'd be kind of floating about in a oh, right. unembodied or semi unembodied sort of mind. Semi bodied kind of way. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Like going on a drug trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, yes. Francis, this must be really interesting for you, having not had that these church backgrounds that we've had. Uh, well, yes. Um, <laughs> None of this convinces you to move more towards the faith, does it? No, not, not so much. No. <laughs> I don't think any of our episodes have been enough to to, to convince you, <laughs> even if you were moving that way. Um, Anyway, right. Well, okay. I think we've done justice to start this subject with people um, and um, go away and think, gosh, there's yet another different interpretation going yeah, on. Yeah. yeah. I will put a link to a Pete Enns, um Yes, podcast, the podcast, which really. Uh, in the notes. Which, which yeah, that was great. Next that place was to really go. interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. As well. I, I just like the idea of this episode of people who've really haven't even thought of the. They might at the end of the podcast go, Oh, I can see what you're talking about at the beginning, thinking, what a crazy podcast. Um, yeah. You know, so that would be my aim that by the end, at least you could say, well, I see what you're doing there. I see what yeah. you're talking about. Actually, yeah. the um, BBC History Extra podcast, which is a, they do all sorts of things in history. And even they have an episode on God's body, which I, I, I couldn't really make sense of. I didn't find it very helpful, but, but um, it, it is mainstream. Uh, in history that people realizing that early 
Hebrews thought that God had a body. Mm. Well, this is, isn't this to do with a book that's been published by, I can't remember her name, but she's quite well known. Um, oh, Stavra being... Kapuli. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, she was, the, I think she was the one who was being interviewed on this uh, episode. Yes. God's, God's body parts. That's right. Yep. No, not just the body, Especially but body feet. parts. Feet. He had very big feet. He had yeah. huge yeah. feet. Which, which, by the way, I think she mentions is, it, is, is, it, is a, Hebrew, a, a, a Hebrew euphemism often for the penis. Um, so that would even make it more radical. Oh, um, right. Yeah. yeah. So when, when actually the old, te- I think she goes into when in the old Testament, it says lift, you know, lift up your skirt, O Lord, show us all your glory mm. might have an actual <laughs> connotation that we would. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> seriously. Oh my word. Um, seriously. Yeah. No, seriously. It's, uh, uh, the book is fascinating. In, I went, uh, look, the book of sure. Solomon can shock If you, you go to prison like, just for, for, uh, a back view with some colourful trousers. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, you get executed for that. <laughs> well, when it um, she goes into, and many, many, many scholars do. You know the thing about Ruth and in, in Judges, Ruth and Boaz, is it? Yeah. And, yep. and it says um, something that they have done over, and she, he, I don't know, uncovered his feet. This is a Hebrew, often a Hebrew uh, for uncovering your sexual parts it's a sexual thing that's about to happen and um that's covered up in the way that is written in in english often and it's like th- thank goodness it is for most christians because it's a bit of a shock to realize this might be a little more in depth same with yeah. the song of songs it's actually incredibly erotic and explicit um about sexuality and body parts um enough to make most christians sort of go red with embarrassment um <laughs> <laughs> so so yes um um um, but I was in a, um, a highly charismatic meeting once and somebody did get carried away in the spirit as I thought back then was happening. And he actually said, Lord, lift up your skirt and show us all your glory. And of course, I remembered that when I heard what Stavra Kapuli <laughs> <Yeah>. said. <laughs> and uh, it does sound very funny even then, to be honest, when it was put in those yeah. terms. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, well, we've had fun on this one, haven't we? So, mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew, for leading us on it yeah Brilliant. thanks okay so until um we meet again um, mm. um for a next subject which we don't know what we're talking about yet because we are open theorists. do we ever know what we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. when do we never know <laughs> never know what we're talking about and yeah. people will say yeah you never do and never have <laughs> that's why um but anyway we plod on on our 54th episode i believe this is Ooh, okay yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so there we go yeah, um lovely. Yeah, for over four years now so well over wow four years. Yeah. yeah um so it's flown it's, by if it's flown by so we're all getting older uh yeah. <laughs> so um okay so until next time i have been andrew your host i've been francis and i've been ed bye, bye.